We started our exploration of the brain kind of on the outside and we've been bit by bit working our way internally. We are now down in the region of the brain called the diencephalon. The diencephalon is pretty much completely surrounded by the cerebral hemispheres. The diencephalon is very central right here in this area of the brain and together with the cerebrum, the diencephalon and the cerebrum together make up what's called the forebrain. So with the diencephalon there are three key structures that it includes and so we're just going to take a look at them here. The diencephalon Cephalon encloses the third ventricle. So remember that third ventricle of the brain, right? Pretty much right here in the center. Um, the diencephalon is all around that third ventricle. The diencephalon includes these three things, the thalamus, epithalamus, and hypothalamus. We'll go through them one at a time. Let's start with the thalamus. So first off, just to find it on the picture, here's the label for the thalamus. It is pointing to right here. Um, this whole region would be called the thalamus of the brain. That little, um, that little dot right there, that's a connection between the right and left halves of, of the brain. Um, and right around in that region is the thalamus. So the thalamus, the thalamus is what makes up the walls of the third ventricle. And the thalamus primarily is a relay center. It relays a lot of sensory information, um, except for smell. Smell doesn't get routed through the thalamus, but other senses, um, sensory info goes through the thalamus. And the thalamus overall, it helps to promote alertness, right? So you respond to, to your senses, right? It helps, helps you to be alert and sort of aware of your surroundings. And um, this is also the region of the brain, the thalamus. This is the region of the brain that allows you to be woken from sleep. If someone tries to wake you up, they are providing sensory input that your thalamus detects. And then your thalamus is what makes that decision to cause you to wake up. So thalamus, that's one part of the diencephalon. Right above the thalamus is the epithalamus. The epithalamus includes the choroid plexus, which is shown in red right here. That choroid plexus does something really important. If you'll recall, this is what's making the cerebrospinal fluid. So that's coming from the epithalamus. Epithalamus forms cerebrospinal fluid. The epithalamus also includes a gland that we're going to be revisiting later in the course, the pineal gland. Um, this is the gland that helps to regulate daily rhythms. They're called circadian rhythms. Um, so um, things like starting to feel tired at the same time of day each day, that's all tied to, to that pineal gland. So we'll come back to that later on. Finally, the diencephalon also includes the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is right below the thalamus. It's parked kind of right here. And this is what forms the floor of the third ventricle, is the, th the hypothalamus. So things like hunger, thirst, uh, regulation of body temperature, that's one that we've mentioned be earlier, before in the course. Um, things like hormone secretion from the pituitary gland, all of those are tied to the hypothalamus. Let me just bring up one more image here. It's a close-up of the hypothalamus. So here's the thalamus. This region here is the hypothalamus, and look at how many different sort of subcomponents the hypothalamus has. This is just tied to the fact that the hypothalamus does a lot of different jobs for the body. Um, it's also involved in emotion and regulation of sleep and wakefulness. Um, so tons of different roles tied to the hypothalamus. This right here, this is the pituitary gland. The hypothalamus does a lot of work to control what the pituitary gland is releasing into the body. This is one that we'll come back to in a later chapter when we talk about the endocrine system.